All right, guys, let's see how many times we can work the phrase turd into the beginning of a video. Atomic elephant turds, atomic buffalo turds, smoked jalapeno poppers, pig shots, armadillo eggs, stuffed jalapenos, shotgun shells, Texas Twinkies, armadillo turds, dragon turds, Texas torpedoes, wolf turds. All of these things are just various ways to stuff a jalapeno, throw it in the smoker, make a delicious little tidbit bite for you to eat. A little labor intensive in the front end while you're making them, but well worth it. Welcome back to Teach a Man to Fish channel. Let's go ahead and get started. So with our Wayne inspired secret ingredient, we haven't worked out a name for these yet. Possibly scallopini pork jalapeno bites. I don't know. Not trying to put the word turd into it. What about me? What about you? You'll be fine. This is our version of it. I haven't seen anybody else use these. You can use pork chops. You can use scallopini slices that we can pick up from our butcher. You could make these slices yourself with any pork butt. But it's, it's critical and it comes out very interesting and tender. And this secret ingredient keeps the moisture in, prevents these little small packages of meat from drying out, which can be a problem on a smoker. You can go to the store and pick these jalapenos up, but for those of you that are growing in them in the garden, it doesn't take many plants before you end up seeing yourself under the avalanche of jalapenos. They're very prolific. They start producing at the right time of summer. They start cranking out. And this is a fantastic way to burn through some of those jalapenos. The larger, the better. Since we're going to have the grill already fired up and going, we're also going to do some regular stuffed jalapeno poppers in our jalapeno popper cooking stand. Another low carb option, great recipe to do. I'll put a link up here for the recipe. There will be an ingredients list in the description on the video, but first you've got to gather all your materials together and dice up some jalapenos. And once you have all those materials together, it's pretty much an assembly process. We talked about this being a bit of a labor intensive, but the star of the show is that scallopini pork. There's another great thing about this recipe, and it's, it's the fact that it's keto friendly or low carb. You can make this recipe without getting wrapped up around the cheap. I, I look at the brown sugar that's thrown in a lot of the rubs that you buy in the supermarket. Look at that first ingredient. That's the primary ingredient in that recipe. And if it says brown sugar, it's, they're just throwing sugar at you to appease your appetite. You can go through those ingredients and find some that have almost no sugar in it whatsoever, which my opinion, you're actually getting real flavor out of it as opposed to just eating something sweet. Next, we continue on with assembly, the cheese, throw the jalapenos in, however many you'd like to have and wait for it. Here comes the secret ingredient. So I have to give credit to Wayne for our secret ingredient, it makes a huge difference in how these turn out. The other nice part about those sandwich pickle slices is the sweet tart flavor that comes with those dill pickles complements the barbecue and the smoky flavor perfectly. Now we're to the point where we have to start to wrap that in the bacon. And believe it or not, there's critical steps when it comes to this as well. Let's take a quick second and talk about the bacon that you use on all of these bacon wrapped recipes. You want to avoid thick bacon, but you also want to avoid too thin. And you typically find that in your really, really cheap bacons. Inspect your package when you're buying it and you want it on the thinner side because when you wrap that little package of meat up, you want that bacon to cook quickly, crisp up nicely, and if it's too thick, it won't do that. If it's too thin, it'll end up with holes and gaps in it. So find that relatively cheap. That's the kind of bacon that you're looking for. Don't go for that high dollar thick cut bacon. Remember when bacon used to be a pound? Shrinkflation. Since we're going to have this A smoke pellet smoker already up and running, we're also going to be making the traditional armadillo eggs, which is a sausage wrap stuffed jalapeno. 
Uh, the smoker's running. The thing's keeping the fridge very well. We'll eat on these for the rest of the week. Another quick tip, the coring tool that we use to core out the center of those jalapenos, the webbing in the seed, a lot of the heat goes away with that. It's well worth having this tool. This jalapeno core by Cave Tools is a really nifty way to get those seeds and that webbing out of each jalapeno, preparing it for stuffing. When you start to talk sausages for your atomic buffalo turds or your armadillo eggs that end up being a part of the wrapping, I don't particularly like your typical breakfast sausages, but maybe Italian, but what we go to our essentials is the chorizo. Chorizo sausage as the outer wrapping. I love the chorizo flavor in many different ways. Gives it a little bit of kick too that goes along nicely with the spice in the jalapeno. If you are watching your carbs, every little bit that you put in there counts and adds up. Let's talk real quick about block cheese. Using block cheese to make your shred for your cream cheese stuffing inside your jalapeno popper, if you buy the store-bought shredded cheese, it actually has a coating on it that if you think about that in the bag, when it's separated, there's a little bit of carbs on that. They put a powder in to keep all those uh, shreds not clumping together. So shred your own by the block and you avoid the carbs that come along with that ingredient. You'll see me using these dry rubs all throughout the video. Be careful with them. Some of them are kind of salty and I got a bit heavy handed on the mix right here. We actually ended up cooking all three types of jalapenos, stuffed jalapenos here. The armadillo eggs there with the sausage, the stuffed bacon wrapped jalapenos, and then the scallopini bacon wrapped pork that you started the video with. So the smoker's going, might as well do all three, and you can feed a crowd with this. As you get towards the end, you may notice that you've got a, a little bit of gaps that Another strip or two of bacon will help seal that up nicely. Think about that. Darn, we gotta add more bacon. I don't pretend to know your smoker. And as you probably know, every smoker is different. You've got to learn its idiosyncrasies. On this A smoke, I do about a 45 minute just on the smoke setting in order to drive some of that smoke into the, the meat and get that smoke ring. And then when I start to elevate temperatures, this pellet grill does not make as much smoke. So over the next hour to an hour and a half, I steadily increase that temperature because you're trying to crispy up that bacon some. I'll end up finally about the last, say 20 minutes of it, I'm up around 400 degrees. I've also placed the sauce on and I let the sauce set the last 10 to 15 minutes at that 400 degrees. That's what I found works best for my equipment. You really do have to know your own equipment and what those temperature settings are going to be, especially if you're doing a stick burner. As with all things meat related, we cook to temperature. You'll see that in all the videos that we do. Time is a guideline, but temperature actually is what you do to achieve the results that you want. And for this, we shoot for somewhere around 190, 195.
<laughs> so good. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a jalapeno playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.